Hi guys, it's the time to get inside the ring with the greatest faction of podcast history. Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW podcast. And guys, we have arrived at the finish line. That's right. This is the third and final segment of the Southland Championship Wrestling Roundtable that we did uh, a few weeks ago on Podbean Live. Uh, I had a great opportunity to talk to a lot of guys. Uh, great time uh, all around. And I'm really excited to do that. And I'm excited to do this uh, monthly uh, going forward, uh, this is the plan. I got the okay from Southland Championship Wrestling. Uh, probably, you know, maybe not so much of an okay from Commissioner Sentinel, but hey, he's not the only person that has power over at Southland. So I'm super excited to be doing this on a monthly basis. And uh, if you guys have a chance, uh, make sure you do follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Just Freaking Wrestling, JFW Podcast. And make sure you guys tune in next week. As Just Freaking Wrestling brings you their 100th episode. That's right. Dally, Dizzle J, Travis D, we're all going to be together once again for the first time in well over a month to do our 100th episode. And we will be releasing that on uh, audio and also video. So if you guys haven't yet, make sure you go to YouTube, search Just Freaking Wrestling Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out our video uh, podcast releases that we uh, hopefully are going to start doing here again as this pandemic thing starts to wind down. So sit back, relax, enjoy the next, I believe, Four guests that I have uh, coming up here on part three of the Southland Championship Round Table. Hey, Max, you there, sir? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Perfect. Look at that. You waste no time right after the break calling right in. Well, I didn't want anybody to get the jump on me, but that's all right. <laughs> you, never well, know appreciate the, you never know when the niece is going to jump right back in. All right. Well, you know, let's let's talk about Nieser. Uh He he spoke very highly of you. He uh, explains that you're you're the motivation for him to get better. How has it been working with uh, not only Nice but working with Special Olympics? Um, really, uh, I wish, like uh, Hunter said earlier, um, there's always something more I wish I could do. There's some been some uh, a lot of other people that have had their hands in helping out with Special Olympics, especially with Nieser. Um, Hunter is one of them. Um, Fit Body U owner Mike Newman has been another big um, part of uh, Special Olympics and, and with helping with Ryan Neese when he's able to get to the gym. Um, Mike also has, uh, during this epidemic or before this epidemic, Mike was starting to bring in um, special needs people from a local facility here in town. The uh, River Valley Special Rec Center, which they're all special needs kids to adults. And he was starting to train a couple of them um, once or twice a week, which was an awesome thing for him to do. So I uh, mm-hmm. hats off to Mike Newman for uh, looking out for those people and stuff, especially Special Olympics. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Ryan East is a one-of-a-kind uh, person for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you sure. know, and, and it's awesome because, like uh, – you know, he, he has a plan, 2024, uh, December 2024, around his birthday, coming in and uh, making his debut. I hope I hope it happens. I know he has the uh, heart to do it. Uh, I've noticed a lot on Facebook. i doing some video posts about doing uh, some workouts and everything. And he, he admits it to himself, you know, like maybe he can't do everything he wants to do, but he's pushing himself to do it. And it's an incredible and uh, – um, uh, motivation, motivating kind of thing to do, you know. Um, but I want to talk about you about a little bit. Uh, how has it been um, with your life uh, after retirement? Like, how how does it feel now? Uh, you know, you got to the end of your career. You announced your retirement uh, at SCW. Uh, where where are you at now uh, with your uh, with your life? And how does it feel? Uh, how's life after the uh, ring? Uh, it's definitely a a difference. Um... I thought personally I would miss it more as far as um, the, the the grind 
the grinding part of it um, before the show, during the show, and after the show, because uh, a lot of times people don't realize uh, what goes into the, from beginning to end, and even cleaning up after the shows, it's it's a big uh, it's a big deal, and um, I miss I miss that part. I mean, as far as the in ring action, I miss it a little bit. Who wouldn't? But it's um, I think it was definitely time for me to step away in that aspect. But I was worried about. Um, being lost in the mix, but um, the powers to be, you know, SEW commission or whatever you want to call us or them, um, mm-hmm. I still have a place there, and I don't see that um, being being uh, gone anytime soon. So I'm definitely I'm definitely there in spirit, and um, now and you kind of bring that up. Um, the Sheik uh, deal is a really uh, it was a hard uh, kind of a hard decision for me and uh, Paradox personally because of the battles in the past with him being from the Middle East where the red, white, and blue. I mean, how could those two coexist? In, yeah, in the same group. And I, you know, he held he held that Genesis belt after he beat me for it um, back in July. And then, like I said, in the rain, after um, I offered him that spot, you know, he, the Sheik, a lot of people don't know, he's he's been in the business for quite a long time. Um, he's been busting his butt for years, and there was a time before he joined us at CW that he was wanting to, uh, per se, uh, hang up the boots, you know. Yeah. And, uh, coming to SCW to Genesis and, and, and training with the kids and stuff kind of lit another fire in his, um, under his butt per se. So, um, it's like we gave him a second life. SCW did a second, uh, a second run or third run or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I did, I just, I've been around him so much in the rain, outside of the rain. Um, I know he was, I knew he was the right choice to maybe take, my spot vacated by you know after i retired so i put it out there for him and he took it so i can't wait for uh things to come up and uh happen when we start running again yeah and you uh and you guys had uh it, it's been kind of a, a roller coaster um uh, history between you and the sheik i mean obviously patriots of hope unholy alliance and everything and uh paradox being a member of both uh you know now the sheik being a member of both but what was your mindset going into, uh, you know, you have you have the Genesis title. You held it uh, probably longer than anyone else held that title. Um, you fought everyone from veterans to uh, these up-and-comers uh, from, the, uh, from the SCW school and everything. And you finally have that match against the Sheik where he picked up the win. And ultimately, like, you know, your, your career kind of ends shortly after that. I believe your last match, uh, and I could be wrong. I'm not great with, uh, short-term memory, but, uh, um, your last match was against Ivan, correct? Uh, no, uh, my last match was in September at the Stension, at the Stension, okay. um, our WrestleMania. I wrestled Ivan the match before that, which was okay. by far one of the hardest hitting matches I've ever been in. And uh, mm-hmm. Ivan's no joke, definitely no joke. And there again, uh, you guys and Hunter were talking about this before. Terry made an appearance during that match for whatever reason, and um, it kind of just threw me for a loop. I had no idea where he was coming from. You know, I don't think Ivan really knew either what the heck was going on. So it kind of threw a monkey wrench into the match as far as. Because I even had the upper hand on me. He had, you know, he had he had the upper hand on me, and uh, Terry distracted me enough. I turned around and took a stunner from Ivan, and that was that was lights out, you know, that was it. And you know, the family issues there at that time. Uh, Jake got up on the ring, you know, they were having their inner turmoil, and kind of allowed me to recoup and uh, get the pin on Ivan, which um. I never thought to this day would ever happen, but it did. And, uh, I take it as a victory. So 
Yeah. Um, my retirement was in September at the dissension match uh, with Paradox, us tagging up for the first time since I had held the Genesis belt. <clears throat> we were against okay. ARW team. Um, Christopher Rack and um, that little short guy from ARW. ARW can't remember his name. What's his name? Oh. What's that little oh. punk's name? Chano. Chano. Chano, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now, now, now it's all coming back to me because yeah, it was because it, it was you know it was a while you know seeing Patriots of Hope stepping into the ring together. I mean, obviously you guys, you know, when you defend the title, Paradox was at your side. When he was uh, having his matches, you were out there with him. But yeah, it, it was a while, while you know to see the Patriots of Hope, and I think all of us were really excited to see like you know Patriots of Hope being tag team champions. Uh, unfortunately, we never got a chance to really see that. Is that maybe a regret you have? Um, not achieving a tag team uh, title run before the retirement? Oh, um, hmm. no, I, you know, when we, when we uh, Paradox first got with me, you know, we, that was our goals. That was, you know, any tag team's goal is run up the belts, you know. Uh, stars just didn't align. There were so many tag teams at that time that were vying for that, for those titles. And it yeah. was, it was, uh, that was hard. You know, a paradox uh, has only been in the business about three to four years, and uh, it's an ever learning process. You know, I didn't start training again until Genesis opened up their doors to us for SEW, and uh, I hadn't been in the ring that much for years anyway, so I was basically starting from scratch again. Mm-hmm. So it was a learning process almost all over again for for a lot of us, and uh, yeah, just uh, just didn't line up the way we wanted, but. Um, we took every match that we had together as uh, going for the belts, even if it wasn't for the belts. We um, we were in the rain, uh, ready to do whatever it took to win. Gotcha. Could you kind of enlighten people on where Paradox has been lately? Um, like, um, kind of like how uh, Sentinel put it, um, lives outside of the business is, is hard sometimes. You got, you yeah. got work, you got family, you got uh, – other goals you're trying to accomplish and stuff. And it's hard to do a lot of those things all at once. And um, that's another reason why <clears throat> I wanted to bring somebody else into our group. And I chose the Sheik. Um, I just felt as far as him, his heart and his ability to uh, go out there every night and do it, do what he could do to uh, be the best. I thought he was the, the greatest, uh, the best pick for the joint paradox and, uh, and us for, uh, the next run that we make when, uh, this, uh, pandemic gets over and done with. <clears throat> uh, what was your mindset when, uh, he was being attacked? I mean, obviously you went out there to, uh, kind of bring, uh, Natasha and Angus back together, but obviously it didn't work out well for him. Um, was it a no brainer to go out and save him or was there kind of a hesitation on going out there? Because um, I mean, I think everyone was surprised when you uh, went out there to clear the ring, help him out and even offered him a position. So was it a no brainer or was there kind of a hesitation to go out there? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, there was a slight, slight hesitation, you know, mm-hmm. um, there again, you know, when it, when it boils down to it, a man trying to stand up for what he believes in. Yeah. Even though it was the unholy alliance, uh, standing up for what he thought was right and it, to get beat down and stuff like that. I couldn't, I couldn't let that happen. You know, I was, I was on the fence. Um, maybe not so much that show, but prior, prior months to that, um, I just, you know, when I, when I, when it boils down to him, I seen him carry that Genesis belt with pride and honor, like the first, uh, the first, uh, belt holder, the lunatic, he carried that belt. Like that was the best thing ever, you know, and yeah. that's how, and that's how I carried that belt, you know, with pride and honor. And it carried on to the Sheik. And, you know, he beat me for it pretty much fair and square, you know, he brought it to me. And, um, even though we've had plenty of matches before that, there, I think there's an extra little fire, fire lit under him that, you know, he's wrestling for that Genesis belt and he, and he did what he could do and he got it for me. So I had to give him props for that. So 
that hesitation was just like just a, for a split second, probably not even a split second. I had to go out and do something. And, you know, and I went and I started to go out with him for his match and he shooed me away. Like, I don't need you out here. And he wanted to do it on his own. And I respected him for that. So, I gotcha. I, yeah. So that showed me there again that he's his own man. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Now, uh, when, when you lost the Genesis title, uh, it was, you lost by submission. It was, uh, you tapped out to the camel clutch. What's the mindset like, uh, tapping out to lose a match over like getting pinned? Like, is there more of like a blow to the ego with one over the other? Uh, you know what? Yeah. I think there's, in, in my experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, getting pinned per se, then, um, I guess you could say giving up as when you tap out, you know. Yeah. And he, he had me beat down. I couldn't I couldn't do anything else. He had me at, at the right moment at the right time and he got me. Um I couldn't I couldn't muster up anything else. He had me at the right moment in time. So um is it a is it a worse letdown? Uh maybe as far as pride. Um I, you know, I've been pinned before, and you know, it, and a pin's a pin. You get rolled up from behind, you get sucker punched. Like uh, Bulletproof has done to me a couple of times over the years. Saw uh, his hidden chain in his trunks. He got over on me with a sucker punch with a chain. It's a pin's a pin. It was cheap, yeah. but he got me. You know, so it's is what it is, and you and you move on to the next. I got you. I got you. Uh, well, when I was talking to Hunter uh, earlier on here, uh, he praised you for uh, the community work that STW does. He gives you the, <clears throat> you know, gives gives you all the praise and everything for that. How does it feel to not only put together a wrestling show for entertainment, but also as a uh, as a support for the community that you guys wrestle in? Uh. <clears throat> It's it's tough, um, and I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Hunter also because he does a lot. His family does a lot um, for the as far as the shows and stuff, and um, it just the community stuff just just happened just because of um, coincidence, I guess. Um, I guess it's always been something that I wanted to do and never had that that highway for it. Or yeah. that uh you know, I think we've talked about this before in one of our uh podcasts we did back a while back. It's just something SCW, this organization, is a vehicle for that and I think it's a perfect vehicle for reaching out to the community, helping people in need or local organizations in need. Um and there's something always going on every month worldwide that there's not enough months in the year to dedicate a month to an organization. You know, it, it's crazy if you really get down to it. Um, and, you know, it just started off uh, organically. Um, Mikey Gunny, he's a kid from a while back that had spinal bifida, and he still has <laughs> spinal bifida. And um, we, we did a... a, a benefit show in partnership with Jojo Sason's uh Michelangelo family foundation and um you know that was the first um real thing that like uh, this is cool you know we could do something like this more and more to get yeah. the word out about different um ailments and different diseases and stuff and you know it just snowballed from there you know the childhood cancer is probably my biggest one um you know, you hear, you know, there again, it's, it's, everything's bad. I'm not, um, putting down any other disease for the recognition, but it just seemed at the time that childhood cancer was getting less and less, uh, funding, less and less media coverage than others. And, and just snowballed from there. And then the snowball, the Special Olympics, um, ALS, MS, you know, heart, heart found, um, AFib Foundation that we helped past couple of shows, and that's close to home um, with some of our uh, SEW family. So, you know, like Hunter said, I feel that there, 
I can't do enough. Yeah. I, well, I think everyone kind of feels that way. Like when they go above and beyond to try to do what's best for not only the community, but maybe even an individual, like you wish you could do more and you wish like, you know, like you could make like that huge impact difference. But I think anything, even as you know, anything like that's just as small as like sharing something on Facebook or just at least acknowledging it in some way does kind of give people, you know, pun intended hope. Right. Now, <laughs> So. Yeah, good one. Yeah, that's that's that was the main thing when uh when Paradox crossed the line from the Holy Alliance to uh to join with me, and you know we had to have a name that mm -hmm. fit that really fit both of us. And um, Paradox is a veteran, an Army veteran, yeah. and you know my my gig, my gimmick then, you know, is a hope. You know, I was where for hope for can childhood cancer and other things. You know, what can we say? What can we be? And just the Patriots of Hope just came out, you know, like, like naturally. So and it stuck with us. And I think it was a good, uh, good combination of the two. I got you. I got you. What's, uh, what's your overall thought on the, um, the response that Sentinel has been getting from the SCW fans over the last couple of months? <laughs> uh, I, I know you guys are, are, are some good friends and he's pretty much in the position he is, uh, yeah. thanks to you and Paradox. So, do you feel that he is doing the right job uh, for the business, or do you think like he is kind of getting like more like person like making like everything more personal to him? Uh, <laughs> that's that's tough. Uh, it's a tough question because mm -hmm. um, really to be in that position, that position of authority. You're gonna have the instigators. You're gonna have the shit stirrers. So you're gonna have, yeah. <laughs> but you're on the other hand, you're gonna have the people who are behind you 100, percent and you're gonna have people that will help you in any way to help you make you the best president or commissioner that you can possibly be, and <clears throat> kind of mimics real life when yeah. you think about it. <laughs> so to be in that position that he's in, you know. I, I wouldn't be able to handle it, you know. I'm too big of a softy, I think, too big of a, too, uh, you know, big-hearted type of person to be able to put my foot down when it needs to be put down. You know, I might get that way sometimes um, <clears throat> when I was more part of the training facility and stuff when we opened up. and uh, But you kind of got to be that way, and you got to lay down the law. This is how it's got to go, or it's not going to work. As a as a coach, you know, as a, a mentor type person, mm -hmm. so for the the sentinel being in that position, and he gets wound up really quick. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, you know, it's almost funny <laughs> to hear. Him, you know, for me, it's it's funny, but it's a serious thing on on, on both sides. But yeah, well, I I think a lot of it is like, and just from from a from a fan's perspective, a podcaster's perspective, it's it's not so much that people are falling against uh Sentinel for a major because like I mean I I can at least admit that like he puts on great shows. He puts on great matches. He gets a lot of good performers in there. But I think his personal issues with bulletproof is yeah. kind of coming through a little bit more. Yeah. And he's uh <clears throat> excuse me, he's developing a slight attitude in like a negative way like when we saw we saw last month at um scw you know he came out his theme song he felt wasn't loud enough so he's <laughs> yelling at the uh, sound right. guy to make it louder and i think it's it's those actions that are turning the fans more against him now we've seen over the last two months like he got booed to the point where he just walked out of the ring um and like he mentioned like you know like what else would he do and no one want no one you know, thumbs up or appreciates getting booed. You know, I don't like getting booed. Right. Uh, that's why I don't have live audiences on my podcast. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't think you'd be getting booed. I don't think. I, I maybe, would hope not. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's just one of the things. Like I think uh, I think he's allowing some of the personal uh, feelings he has towards the business, towards the fans that kind of get him and put him into like more of a sour attitude because when he first took over i mean people were every people were behind him the yes. arw thing happened now i'm not 
I don't know what happened with ARW. I don't know how it came in, if it was Keith, if it was Sentinel, why it went on as long as it did. I know we heard uh, both sides of their story on it. Um, but, I mean, we could all admit that, you know, ARW did make an impact in SCW for quite some time, so much so that we're looking at an ARW guy who's the current SCW champion. We have ARW guys who are still making an appearance at SCW in some kind of capacity or another. Right. And, I mean, Sentinel, like, you know, for whatever reason, like, allows it to happen, you know, or wants, you know, wants it to happen. However, like, it's looking like it's just like he – he seems to be avoiding some of the response that or do, he's avoiding some of the questions that are being brought up by Bulletproof and Steve. And let's face it, Bulletproof and Steve don't really ask the questions in a considered kind of way, I guess if you find. But you know, I mean they they bring up valid points. As like I mentioned, you know, Bulletproof isn't advertised on the flyers, you know, when they are in matches, they're put in at the beginning, they're not really so much getting these opportunities. Right. And when he talks about the opportunities not being earned, well, they're not getting the opportunity, they're not getting a chance to earn it. Um, so I guess long story short, your uh, the question for you is do you believe he's doing everything in a professional capacity, or is he allowing some personal issues to kind of cloud his judgment? I think uh, he's doing as good as he can for right now. Um, mm -hmm. I know the personal things. I have personal issues with Bulletproof also. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's hard for me to say because um, I, I wrestled the bow quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Wrestled against Bulletproof Industries and whatever combination they've had quite a bit. And um, I know I brought it up earlier in the podcast and some of my comments. Um, yeah. Me and Bo had a, I had a match when he was fired from SCW and he was trying to get back in. And Keith was giving him a chance. And every chance he got, he lost. Well, he started carrying around a, a poster-sized sign of his newborn kid to the matches. Like, you know, I'm, yeah. doing, I'm trying to get my job back to support my family, this and that, da, da, da. And he's pulling at my heartstrings, you know, and I'm a softie, you know. Um, yeah. I beat him in that match, and I felt so bad that Keith was denying him his job back. You know, he's got a sign of his newborn kid, you know. Who's going to, who's going to, you know, not fall for that? And I did. Yeah. And I, I, on the microphone, I pleaded for President Keith to get him his job back, and he still did it. So I was like, Wow. Little did we know, behind the scenes, Keast was in Bulletproof's back pocket. So that's that's where my my um, my gripe is as far as that. And um, uh, you know what it is, it is right now. It's in the past, but that kind of stuff still hovers over your head like a dark cloud. Doesn't yeah. ever go away, and I won't forget it. No, I, 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 and you know, Sentinel was, Sentinel was involved with that too. So you know, that's probably hovering over his head too about that. You know, that mm -hmm. one time, which was more than one time. <laughs> so it's hard to uh, get past that. But as far as Sentinel doing his job, I think he's doing it to the best he can with what he has to work with right now. Can it be better? I think so a little bit. You know. Try to keep us cool a little bit more, but when you got the right people pushing your buttons, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me, uh, I got, I got two more questions for you. Yeah, sure. um, let's say, uh, let's say uh, Paradox comes back, Paradox and Sheik for the uh, SCW Tag Team Championships. Do you Ooh, think man. that could happen? And do you think they could, uh, could, play, uh, could win them? That would be awesome. You know, um, this downtime, like Hunter said, this downtime, the, the mm -hmm. shutdown and stuff. Everybody should be trying to better themselves as best as they could with yeah. what they got, and um, mm -hmm. and I know I know Sheik. I know he he works out as much as he can. I know Paradox with his um with his outside of the business job and stuff, he gets in what he can possibly get in. But the the top the the fact of the matter is, when SCW starts back up, when they start running, whenever that happens, it's you're going to be able to see a big big change in a lot of our, our, our guys on the roster. So hopefully that uh, ties in with Sheik and Paradox and uh, going for the titles. You know, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's definitely not going to be the first time, uh, first match they get. But um, I think they can prove themselves down the line 
and uh, yeah. be, be aligned for a title match. Yeah. Well, and it's a, uh, it's interesting too because they do have that experience as a tag team in the past when they're the unholy alliance. So it's not like it's not like they have to learn to work with each other because they have done it. Right. So um, yeah, they uh, might have to they might have to learn how to work together in a different way. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> different capacity. Uh, yeah. Last question I have: um, December twenty twenty four. Neeser's making his debut. He's tagging with Paloma Star. Um, on the other side of the ring, I put Sierra and Adam Adam Cage. Uh, Hunter put uh, Karmakazi and Maverick Cage. If you were to fancy book that match, who is Nisa and Paloma going up against? Oh, boy. You know, I, I, I'm always um, on Nisa about biting off more than he can chew. Mm-hmm. And he's got a big heart. That kid that kid's probably got the biggest heart and drive out of everybody I know. And um, I try to help him out as much as I can. Hunter does. Uh, Mike Newman from Fit Body U tries to help out as much as he can. Doug Keys owns Genesis, tries to help him out as much as we can. And yeah. I tell Ryan all the time, you might not have all of us around when you need to be pushing yourself. You got to push yourself on your own. And I think he does a pretty good job at it um, for his uh, circumstances and stuff. So yeah. the fantasy book him in his first match against Paloma Star and him, they all. I think a perfect uh, team that they can go up against with personalities and uh, general just uh, kind of likes, you know, similarities. Mm-hmm. I would think Bobby Blues would be one. Bobby Blues would, would be good. Yes, you know, the, his charisma, his his uh, <laughs> his air against, pers- you know, as you could say, you know, uh, against uh, his partner. That's a tough one too. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be a mixed gender tag team. No, I mean it, it's you fancy know. booking. You can put whatever you want in there, you man. Know what I mean, yeah, yeah, fancy booking. Let's say, let's say it's uh, Paloma and Keeser uh, versus uh, versus uh, two guys. You got uh, Bobby Blues. Who is Bobby Blues tagging with? Uh, Gino Latino, I think, would be great. You know, yes. Bobby Blues and Gino Latino, and they tagged a couple of times. And I know a guy from way back, uh, the keeper, when he was still running around with the asylum, mm-hmm. um, he got to manage Gino Latino for one match. And uh, I know the keeper told me, like, that's one of the best times he's had was managing Gino Latino. You know, that guy, <laughs> if anybody's familiar with him, what he does in the rain and stuff and his, uh, his personality – I think those two versus Denise and Paloma Star would be <laughs> would be something to see. That'd be cool. Well, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see him achieve his goals and make his debut. I know he is probably the. I mean, outside of Steve, whatever Steve wants to consider him, but the top fan of Southland Championship Wrestling. Uh, he's Definitely. front row every single month. Uh, very gets involved. I know it crushed him when he couldn't be there uh, in December. Um, yeah. but I, he's gonna make a comeback. I mean, I mean, Nisa, he, he's never down and out. And I mean, the, the, the dude's got balls on him. I'll say it. I mean, like to sit there and to sit there and ask somebody to a dance in front of uh, you know, hundreds of yeah, fans and everything. I, I mean, that takes a lot of courage, and he did that. I, I can't think of a lot of people who would actually, you know, you know, take it, you know, and it's yeah, awesome. He's, uh, Ryan is definitely a one of a kind. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the mold was broken for sure when he was uh, sent down from the heavens. Yeah, um, for him to do that, you know, he's he he has no um not shame, but uh, some what it, that that uh wall that a lot of people have, they can't just get past that. Ryan can get past that wall. Yeah. He'll sit out there and ask, you know, obviously we've seen it. He asked Paloma Star to the the night to shine the the yeah. Tebow thing that they do uh proms across the the world for uh special needs people, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, something else that's another thing that's, that goes on in this world that is awesome. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, Ryan, Ryan will just like, he'll ask uh, anybody if he could do this and he could do that because in his mind he's going to do it. And, you know, yeah. God bless him for that. Yeah, definitely a cool guy. Definitely see him uh, achieve his goal and watch his journey go through. Uh, Baynex, I appreciate you sitting down with me. Um, 
I, I, I'm glad I had a chance to watch your career for at least a couple of years before uh, you decided <laughs> hanging up. But yeah. it's like I it's like I mentioned earlier uh, in the show, you know, never say never, right? Right. Yeah. You never know. Um, right. <laughs> all the greats have done that in the past, and some have mm-hmm. never, and some have. have. Um, as of right now, it, the answer is no. Um, yeah. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm trying to uh, rebuild myself as far as uh, my aches and pains. It's, um, doing a lot of DDPY yoga. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I do it too. I love it. And love you know it. what? It, I've, I've been on it for about five weeks now, and I noticed some little differences in my hips, my knees, as far as flexibility, but it's still, it's still hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that, you know, I like that challenge. So I think actually, actually, we get done with here, I think I'm due for a, a DDP, DDP yoga workout. Hey, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're we're all stuck inside, so why not take the opportunity? You know. Yeah, you learn something new. That's for absolutely. sure. Yep. Banex, I appreciate you sitting down and talking with me, man. All right, no problem. Keep it up. I appreciate. It. Thank you. All right, guys, we're about uh, we got we got about forty five minutes left of uh, the show and everything. Uh, I'm still taking call ins. Uh, before I take the next person, whoever wishes to call in. Um, make sure you guys are following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the JFW Podcast. It's where we put out notifications for the shows and what's going on. We share a little bit about the wrestling business. And that's where uh, we do kind of plug some of the independent things in the area. I mean, we do work with Southland Championship Wrestling more than anyone else. But we do like to talk about ARW and uh, other uh, companies that are in the area. So make sure you follow us on social media. Um, I appreciate you guys sitting down and, uh, you know, being part of the show here and, you know, really taking time out of your day to, you know, to kind of like listen to not only me, but to sit down with a lot of the SCW uh, wrestlers, executives and fans. Um, Steve, what companies? Uh, ARW, we, we work a lot with. Um, there's a company that we used to work with called Powerhouse Wrestling that was out in Pontiac. Uh, they recently sold, but the owner of that Opened a new company out in, uh, I want to say Ottawa. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, unfortunately, because I haven't had a chance to talk with them in a while. GPW, I've never been to. Um, I've, I don't know, I never took, I guess I never had the opportunity to uh, pay attention to a GPW show when it was happening and everything. So maybe in the future I will. Um, I do have a call in coming in here, so I'm going to take that and uh, we kind of talk a little bit more on uh, independent uh, companies here in a minute. Let's see here. Yo, yo, oh. it's me, JPH. How's it going, Trav? JPH, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm happy you called in. I'm sitting here like, like, I need to speak with JPH when he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that because I think you're better than everyone else, even though I do believe you have like one of the greatest talents in the ring currently? But you were the first person we had an entire episode dedicated to, and we got to talk about your history so much that I needed to find yeah. since last time we spoke. So, first off, how are you doing, man? How how are you handling this quarantine? Well, uh, you know, all, you know, well, I've been doing this, like I've been stretching. I've been stretching a lot lately. Oh. That's what I've been doing because I at least want to like get myself like limber and mm-hmm. stuff like that. As soon as all this stuff you know, subsides and all that, uh, you know, I've been taking care of myself, my mother, you know, my two dogs, um, you know, and it's just been, it's just been really, I, I just been chilling really. Yeah. Just, just giving, giving the body a chance to kind of like rebuild itself. Uh, and it, yeah. it's weird, man, cause like, I mean, I've been to the wrestling school. I've watched you guys in the ring, man. I mean, like, I mean, for for you to be, you know, secluded to your house, not getting out and doing what you're doing, man. I mean, like, that's got to be rough, you know. It, it it is. It it is pretty rough. It's pretty rough. But you know, it. I'm I, I'm I'm expecting the worst, but at the end, I'm hoping for the best. You know, I'm hoping for all of us. You know, not just for SCW, but for everybody that's in the professional wrestling business to you know go back in, you know, go back in the ring, you know, showcase their skills, regardless if it's a, a man or a woman. Um, yeah. You know, I'm I'm very optimistic, and all of us, you know, to going back into professional wrestling. And to be quite honest with you, I I really miss it. I miss it a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's unfortunate <laughs> that we did have the uh, cancellation of the show uh, this past week and everything. I mean, yeah. 
supposed to have uh, SCW. Um, and unfortunately, with the pandemic going on and everything uh, being canceled, it was it uh, it it was a hope for at least the first half of the month that was still going to happen. And unfortunately, nothing got better to where we uh, could see an SCW show this month. But I want to go back to last month, and I want to talk yeah, uh, yeah, sure. about. Uh, this, a lot of the things that happened because you were you were a huge part of that entire show. Not only uh, the promo you had with um, Marche at the beginning of the match or the beginning of the show that turned into a match later on in the evening, but you also threw your hat in the ring along with uh, the Sharpshooters for a number one contendership at the Genesis title. Um, so I guess the first question is like, like what what made you want to call out Marche Rocket to begin with? Like, let's start with that. Well, one of, well, one of the reasons why I wanted to call out Marche Rocket in the ring with me to face me one on one is because I never really faced him one on one. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was it was all you know. The first time I wrestled him, it was in a tag match. You know, with myself and RK Savage, but going up against you know at the time the newly formed uh, Marche Rocket and Sean Mulligan tag team, and unfortunately yeah. we lost there. And then of course you know we. Lost again uh, back in December of, I'm, I'm assuming, 20, 2018. And, and, the, oh, and the last time before I wrestled him at that singles match was against him and Marche Rocket. So I never really got the chance to really wrestle him one-on-one. That's one of the reasons why. Uh, the second reason why is, why not? You know, yeah. why not? I'm, I'm a, I've been on a roll. You know, I've been on a roll ever since my singles career. Uh, even got even got started, you know, and I just I just wanted to throw my I just wanted to throw myself into the deep end and see how far I went. Oh yeah, and there's no argument that Marche Rock is one of the top talents, not only in the business but definitely in the Midwest area. Um, yes, so you had the match, great match, probably uh, arguably the match of the night. Uh, you picked up the victory, but as uh, Steve uh, mentions in the message board here. Uh, shoulder was up before three, but still got the three count. Do you do you believe there is any kind of dispute in the win that you have against Marche? I I don't know. You know, I when, when I was in the when I was in the back, you know, after I had that match, you know, I was telling you know everybody was like you know congratulating me on my victory and stuff like that, you know, and I was just telling myself, you know, like I won. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like, but I don't felt like I won. I don't felt like me, you know, I- internally that I won. I mean, of course, to the fans and everything else, I won. But for me, internally, it felt like I haven't. And that's one of the reasons why I at least, you know, since I did, quote unquote, win that match, I at least wanted to extend my hand to Marche Rocket. But unfortunately, you know, he refused to shake it. But, but, but that's, but that's okay at the end of the day. Yeah, and we we uh, we do have a saying here at uh, JFW: a win's a win. It doesn't matter how you get it; if you get it, you have it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I, I do like I kind of see like where like if it wasn't a clean win, it can leave a, ta- a bad taste in your mouth. And it looked like it that loss that Marche took it kind of made him a little bit bitter there at the end because for him not to shake your hand seems very out uh, of character for him. Um, yeah, I thought so- yeah, I thought that was pretty odd uh, too. I mean, he's he's not he's he's. He's genuinely not that type of person, but I guess ever since he came back, you know, with his time in like, you know, freelance a little bit, you know, he spent like, like a considerable amount of time in Mexico. And, you know, it it was, it was just like, you know, I've seen him around uh, before I even wrestled him and stuff like that in places like in Wisconsin, of course, you know, with other promotions and stuff like that. So I, 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 it, it's it's very it's very uncharacteristic of them to do that. Yeah, and, I mean, and, but I guess like when you look past like you know the, um, the controversy of the uh, finish and everything, the fact of the matter is you hold a win over a former SCW heavyweight champion, and that's got to be pretty cool too. It is. I mean, it it is pretty cool to hold a victory against the former uh, SCW champion, and you know, and I hope. And I hope I do win more. I hope I do win more. I I hope I hope I you know, SCW gives me that chance. Depending on uh, which title it is, depending on if it's the Genesis title that uh, unfortunately Jake Andrews carries, and you know of course Max Holiday with the uh, with the heavyweight title too. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we uh, we we had a chance to talk with Hunter a little bit earlier in uh, in this uh, live podcast um, because we know we know right now there's there's three people who are looking out for an opportunity for that Genesis title: you, James Creed, and Max Blaylock. Uh, you guys you guys are at school together. You guys train with each other. Um, and I, I asked Hunter, and I know it was difficult for him to answer, but I needed an answer. He said, out of the three, he says, you're the one that uh, is probably the most ready to win that title. Um, do you believe that out of the three of you guys that you are the most ready or possibly even the most deserving of a title shot? Well, well, for one thing, thank you. I appreciate it when it comes to Hunter Payne saying that. Mm -hmm. um, to, and, to, and to answer your question, I feel ready. I do feel like I'm ready to, to, to go up against that triple threat match with Max Blaylock, James Creed. Um, of course, you know, I have tremendous amount of respect for those guys. You yeah. know, I, you know, those, those guys, I've trained with those guys. I mean, of course, they have different styles. Um, Max Blaylock being more of a striker, in a sense, and James Creed being more of the almost a high flyer to a T. I mean, of course, I mean, hopefully he... Uh, Hopefully, by the time we do have this triple threat match, I hope that James Creed is 100%. But so yeah. far, I feel ready about this. Yeah, and I, I and I think you are ready. You know, it's like I've I've mentioned multiple times here. You know, and I I don't I don't sound like I'm I don't want to sound like I'm working out to you. But let's face it. I mean, like you are the best <laughs> right now, man. I mean, when it thank comes you, to, thank you, I appreciate to, it. When it comes to SCW, you are like the Bret Hart of the company you're you're the workhorse you go out there every single month you bust your ass we've seen it not only as you know part of uh rulers of wrestling back in the day but we've seen it as you know you went on to face brian cage you know impact wrestling champion marcy rocket former southland championship wrestling held your own in that match we saw you take on uh marcy rocket we even saw you in the i quit match of the rk savage so i think if anybody was ready for an SCW heavyweight title run. It's no doubt you. But like I mentioned earlier, for me um, as a fan of wrestling, I always want to see that mid card title be held before the uh, main event title. So I think I'll yeah. agree. I do believe you are the next one to take on uh, Jake Andrews for the uh, Genesis title. I think it being his first title events would be probably the most challenging, but that is a match of the year kind of uh, match that you would see. You and Andrews, you're both young. You're both, you both have a nice blend of striking, but a little bit aerial. You know, you get some technical work in there too. Um, but if that's not a dissension main event type match, I don't know what is. Well, well, I, I it's a, it's a funny thing because I keep thinking about this all all the time ever since ever since that show back in January. It was just like. I, I just you know, I, I I've I've given Jake Andrews the respect that he that he at least quote unquote wants in yeah. the sense because of course you know he called me out, called me out of my name, called me overrated, called me this, called me that, whatever. You know, I'm you know, I'm I, it, it, more than anything for me, it's not really about it's not really about the name calling and the saying, it's more of the doing. You know, you got to show me in the ring that you are capable of staying in the ring with me. And of course, he hold, he held his own until the yeah. end, of course, when he kicked me in the balls. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 it you know, it, it, it fathom, it does fathom me to know mm -hmm. that, excuse, excuse me, <clears throat> that it, it fathoms me to know that Jake Andrews, a, a guy who I've seen ever since I even came out of Project Revolution Wrestling and I've seen him in Chicago style. I've seen him in GPW. I've seen him, you know, here in SCW. I've seen him in other places. You know, I, I, personally, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with that guy. I got you. Uh, I got one more question for you and uh, then I'm, I'm going to let you go here. Uh, earlier, we had a chance to talk with Bo Anderson, uh, Bulletproof LLC, and I asked them if there was anyone in the current roster at SCW to bring on to Bulletproof's team. He mentioned you. What's your thoughts on that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't be thinking about Bulletproof all that much. But if hey, if Bo Anderson wants something, he can get something. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> he, uh, he he definitely would love to see JPH be part of Bulletproof LLC. I mean, do you ever think that maybe JPH could be a new, uh, um, uh, I guess, an addition to that team and potentially maybe be that main vendor that they're looking for? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not. I mean, of course, I'm, 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 a, I'm a one man type of thing. But we'll talk about it. We can talk right. about. It. I'm always up for discussion. Right. You always know, leave the, always leave the doors open. You know. I mean, of course, you know. But I want to. I at least want to tell them. At least, like, look, man. If you want me in mm-hmm. bulletproof industries, this is what I want. You know what I'm saying, and I'll give him, and I'll give him my, and I'll give him my, uh, I'll give him my notes for it when that time comes. Right. I mean, he's a businessman. He's got to understand there's some kind of negotiations that go into you know somebody coming on board and everything. Because it's like he said, like you know, when it comes to Bulletproof LLC, Bulletproof has their own separate contracts with Bulletproof yeah. contracted by SCW. So you know, yeah, there has to be a negotiation, and I'm sure, well, you know, Bulletproof would be understanding and be willing to listen. It's like Steve mentioned here in the uh, notes. They have planes and buses. They love to party and enjoy life. And I mean, who wouldn't like to see, you know, Bulletproof LLC member JPH as the new SCW Heavyweight Champion? Yeah. All I all I want to tell him is just for right here, just in public, is mm-hmm. I'm not cheap. I'm right. not cheap. There we go. I'm not fast. And I'll make it I'll make it worth your while. There we go. I don't know if uh, Bulletproof is still here, but I know Steve is here, and Steve's a huge fan of uh, Bulletproofs and friends with them. So Steve, make sure I, I, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, he's he's been here for quite some time, and you know, and uh, <laughs> I'm seeing the comments and all that, so you know, I'm I'm seeing them. Yeah. Well, JPH, I appreciate you calling in, man, and everything. Um, thank you, man. Any, thank you. Yeah. Is there any final words you want to tell anyone before uh, before I let you go? Yeah, I, I I will say this uh, for everybody that is like kind of seeing like this JPX five J F thing. I just want to let everybody know this is me. I gotta change it. Uh, it it was it was like random. I don't know why it's there, but I gotta get that changed. But I just want to let you guys know that um, hopefully everything goes back to the way that it was. Um, of course, if you're religious, keep God by your side. If not. Keep your family, keep your close friends by your side and all that. And we're going to make it through and we're going to make it through and we're going to see it through to the end of this coronavirus. I want to let everybody know that. Good, good, good way of putting it, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you for your time. You take care. All right, man. Peace out. I'm not gonna lie, I love talking to JPH. I love talking to all you guys, and I appreciate everyone calling in and everything. We got about 25 minutes left here on the show, so I'll still take anyone else to call in, and uh, you know, we can talk for a little bit. Um, I got to get this in though, because I'm obligated to do it. It's a contractual thing that I'm proud of. Uh, JFW is sponsored by BallWash.com, and I know you guys are thinking BallWash sounds like a weird thing to uh, type into a Google search, but just hear me out before you judge it. Uh, Ballwash.com uh, is a men's hygiene company that creates uh, products uh, for men. Um, they have uh, certain products that are referred to as uh, ball cream, uh, ball powder, uh, ball wipes. Um, but they also have other things like shampoos, conditioners, body washes, and stuff like that. It's a, it's a complete ca- hygiene ca- company designed for men. Now, I've never been into a uh, wrestler's locker room during a show, but I got to assume it doesn't smell the freshest. Um, so if you guys get a chance, Ball Wash has a body wipe that you could use to kind of clean yourself off to get that funk off your junk. Um, and because of us, because of who we are, because we are sponsored by Ball Wash, if you go to ballwash.com, literally B-A-L-L-W-A-S-H, ballwash.com, Check out the merchandise. Check out the products. They have uh, individually uh, packaged items you can buy. They have kits. They actually have subscriptions as well you can sign up for. Throw them in the cart at checkout. If you use the promo code FREAKNET, F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T, all one word, you save 15% on your final order. And uh, it's FREAKNET because uh, JFW is part of FREAKNET Studios. It's a overall company that um, that runs jfw this freaking show and doug gray area and stuff like that so 
Again, huge shout out to Ball Wash for being a sponsor of the show. If you guys like to, go to ballwash.com, check out the product, throw it in the cart, and use the promo code FREAKNET, F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T, at checkout to save 15% on your final order. So, Oh, geez. Hey, Brody's here. God, I haven't seen Brody in a while. Uh, Sentinel, this doesn't apply to you. You have none. Yeah, that's that's rough. Sign guy. Um, yeah, guys, we got about, we got about 20 minutes here, give or take. Uh, I'm, I still got the lines open. I'll take a couple more callers. If anyone feels like calling in and talk about SCW or, uh, you know, their feelings on, you know, the, the effective, the business being affected by the pandemic, um, uh, what's going on, like, you know, wrestling related, you know, I know, uh, James Creed is here. Max Blaylock is here. Doc Blaylock is here. Um, you know, if you guys want there, if you, if you don't want to call in, you don't have to call in. We can sit here and talk on the uh, message board. I have no problem with that either. You know, we're starting to wind down at the end of the day. I appreciate you guys taking the time out and sitting with me. And I, I, I do apologize again uh, about that little hiccup on uh, the show getting cut off at three hours. Again, that's something I did not know, but now I know for the future. So uh, quick uh, poll, quick question. You guys, uh, you guys like doing this? Was this fun for you guys? Should we do more of these? Should I look at uh, doing a uh, possibly monthly episode of this following the SCW shows? Kind of like a Southland talk where we kind of talk about the previous show and the results and all that stuff. Uh, I do want to hear from you guys because I do this for you, the listeners. So if it works, if you guys love it, we'll continue to do it. And I have no problem doing that. Uh, I know there was some kind of confusion on um, on signing up and all that other stuff. Uh, again, this, this whole live thing is new to me. So if you guys uh, could, make sure you subscribe to Podbean. Follow us uh, on, uh, on Podbean. Follow us on Google, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to the show. A subscription to any of those platforms help us out in a huge way. If you have an iPhone, if you listen to it on iTunes, Leave us a rating, leave us a review because that'll bump us up uh, tremendously in like, you know, like recommended viewerships and stuff like that. Uh, it just helps the podcast grow because we have been doing this now. Uh, I do believe the, um, this month, uh, today actually, fit, literally today was supposed to be our 100th episode. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it because of the pandemic thing. So we are a few weeks out and I do apologize for the shows not being released like they normally do, but... Uh, for the safety and well-being of the other uh, hosts and everything, it's better that we kind of keep separated. I am trying to figure out a way to work with them to do kind of a a Skype call podcast. Uh, they they just need to figure out how to do it on their end. Obviously, again, idea. Brody, of course you could call in, man. No one else is calling in. Take it. Make sure, though, when you call in, because I do believe you're new to this, make sure you have headphones or earbuds or something plugged into the phone or the computer that you're listening to this from. Because if you don't, there will be an echo in the background. And if you get an echo, I'm going to give you this. And then I'm going to hang up on you. I don't want echoes. And it's nothing against you. It's just the echo. Don't do it. So, um, yeah, go ahead and call, feel free to call in. That's totally fine. I have no problem with that whatsoever. You don't have headphones. How do you not have headphones? If you buy a new phone, it comes with headphones. Ah, Brody, you're killing me, man. You know what? Call in. Let's see how bad the echo it is. If the echo sucks, I'll hang up on you. But go ahead and call in anyways. We'll find out. (coughs) But yeah, no, as I was going back, make sure you subscribe to uh, the podcast on wherever you listen it to. Um, Let's see how this works. Brody. Yo, what's up? Hey, there's no echo. The echo ain't bad? There's no echo. I bet. The life we live at. How are you listening to me, man? Uh, I'm listening on my iPhone. I'm Podbean at. Oh, no shit. Nice. That's awesome, yeah. man. How have you been? I haven't talked to you in God seems like forever. I think the last time I spoke to you, you didn't have a driver's license. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah, bro. child. Jeez. <laughs> how have you been, man? How, how, how has Brody been? I've been doing okay, man. I've just been working. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? Like, you know, this is a perfect question for me to ask you, man, because um there, there's been a lot of issues. And obviously, you know, since uh you're still in high school and everything, but you know what? Shout out to you 
for being a high schooler, uh, uh, trying to reach your dream of being a pro wrestler, doing it early. I mean, you're you're like the next William Regal or Paige or whoever did it at a young age. Um, Tony Storm, I think, started wrestling at like 14 or whatever. But um, how has this affected you uh, being, you know, going to school every day and now you're not even doing that and all this stuff? Like how, how has the pandemic affected you and your ability to learn your craft? That's the question, Brody. Make sure you answer it. Travis? Brody, you there? Yeah, sorry. My thing got messed up. Hello? How dare you mess up in the middle of my conversation? Who do you... Th- no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sitting there. How, how has the pandemic affected you? How has it affected me? Dude, I've really been missing wrestling. Literally, dude, you don't know, dude. I've been watching so much wrestling on TV. I've been thinking about wrestling, dude. I've been thinking about new moves. I just can't wait back to get back into the ring, dude, and like wrestle you know what i mean yeah i miss it a lot yeah and it and uh i mean i i've mentioned before i've gone to the wrestling school i got a chance to sit down with a lot of you guys there and everything and uh you're i mean dude you're 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 one of the most energetic guys out there and uh it's cool to kind of like you know watch you guys you know slowly you know build into you know the next you know uh crop of guys into the business uh, you do a lot of work for SCW, which is awesome. Um, what's what's the what's the time frame? Like, when do you plan having what, what what's the plan for Brody to debut at SCW in the wrestling uh, business? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, Travis, but uh, before the whole coronavirus, I was supposed to have a dark match in April. Oh man, and you didn't. Yeah. Mm. Oh, who knows? Maybe soon. Ooh, Bobby Blues is calling in. Do you want Do you want Bobby Blues to call in with us, or do you want me to wait? Sure, have him in. Yeah, let's add him in. Yeah. Bobby. What's going down. What's up, Bobby? Oh, Bobby? What's going down? Bobby, there's an echo. Please tell me you have headphones. Oh, Jesus. I got to get headphones. Give me a second. Got to get headphones. I feel like we're talking in a cave. Yeah, you really? Hey, Bobby, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna call you back. I, just, I can't, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Get the headphones. Answer the phone faster next time. Let's see if I answer the phone at all now. How dare you? So, Travis, how have you been, how have you yeah. been affected this whole epidemic? You know, it's been weird. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, kind of falling in that category of essential uh, employees. So I still uh, go out and do my work. Um, I've been trying to rebuild my life since being laid off in December. So I have a temp job right now. Uh, honestly, if we look past like the wrestling business that, uh, I kind of, uh, podcast about, uh, I created a Freaknet studios. I mentioned that a little bit ago. Uh, I'm actually in developing a, a new podcast. I'm going to produce, I'm not going to host. I'm going to produce for it to build the, uh, Freaknet brand. So I've been staying really busy to not let it get to me because I'm, I'm a hermit guy as it is. I mean, if there's no SCW show, I don't go out on Saturdays. It's, yeah. not just, it's just not me. Um, but uh, I, I stay busy with this stuff, you know, and that's why like, I was like, I need to do something for podcasting. Uh, so I'm like, let's make the live. Uh, I talked with SCW. Everyone at SCW is cool with me giving this idea, giving me the opportunity to see if this works. Uh, granted, Sentinel was kind of iffy on it because he's not a big fan of me. He says he's a fan of the show, but I don't really think he is. Um, but. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback about it. People are loving this. So I think I'm going to, you know, for the time being, I'm going to, you know, start putting a live stream podcast out every Sunday following an SCW show. So it gets like a round table like we're doing now to kind of discuss what happened at the show beforehand. Cause I think that it'll be, it'll be fun. So yeah, that would be fun. I think it'd be cool. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So. Brody, just just tell me a little bit, man. How how do you feel about being a ref right now? I mean, you love doing it. You're good at it. Yeah, man. I love getting in the ring. Whatever capacity it's in, whether it's wrestling, refereeing, doing whatever. I I just love wrestling in general. Refereeing is one of my favorite things to do. I love being the senior official. I don't know, dude. It's it's just one of my passions. Wrestling is my passion. It doesn't matter which what I'm doing, whether I'm working sound, whether I'm in the ring wrestling or refing. I just enjoy it. Yeah. I got you. Um, oh, gee, what was I going to ask you, man? I got, you know, let me ask you. You're an employee of SCW. You could kind of help me with this. 
right. So, so about a month ago, or a little bit over a month ago, oh, Bobby Blues is coming in. All right, I'm going to take this Bobby Blues call with us, and I'm going to right, remind me of the question, okay? All right. Bobby, did you? No, oh, he's not even there anymore. Whatever. I tried to connect you, man. Try again here in a second. Uh, Bobby Blues, you're killing me, man. Uh, I wonder if I could call him. Get a no. lot of this. Whatever. Bobby, are you there? Nope. Okay. Brody, I'm going to ask you. Bobby, please call back in. We'll try again. So, uh, Brody, uh, about a month or so ago, uh, we we had uh, we had a new host uh, debut at the show, uh, the Extreme Outcast Dallas. Uh, shout out to Dally. Can't wait for you to get back with uh, Does a Jam myself to do these podcasts. Um, and she's been crushing it. She she's doing such a great job. I'm happy with the decision to bring her on to the show. Um, but there was a there was an incident that happened. Uh, I want to say in f- January, where uh, we had a show lined up for a recording that she wasn't able to make due to the decision of Commissioner Sentinel. Um, as a employee of SCW, does Sentinel give you guys free range to do additional things outside of SCW, or is it one of those like anal retentive things where it's like, if it's an SCW show day, this is all you do? Because it really bothered me that he – without saying it, strongly implied that if she didn't pass on the JFW show that day, she wouldn't have a job anymore. To be honest, Travis, uh, I've never, like, been on a podcast or had, like, whenever there's a show day, I always make sure that I'm available. So I've never had something come up to where that it was like that for me. No. But in my opinion, I think that uh, Sentinel, we've never talked about it, but I think he'd be open to it as long as you talk to him about it. But uh, why Dallas was not at the, the JFW podcast, I'm not sure. She could have chose to be at the show. I don't know. If she could have, if she said that, then I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, because I'm not sure the circumstances. Yeah, well, I know I know it's kind of disgusting, because the thing is, like, we record the show before the SCW show happens, you know, and we try to make it work to where she could have done both, but for some reason, that just couldn't happen for Sentinel. Now, um, I don't know his uh, his reasoning on it. And he doesn't have to give me a reason. He's in, he's entitled to be who he is, and he doesn't have to give me any reason whatsoever. Because hey, I'm not an executive of the business. I don't I don't work for SCW. I don't work within SCW. So he's not entitled to give me any kind of explanation whatsoever. But it kind of would have been nice for for me to know why the one business that we promote on a weekly basis that we allowed an employee of SCW to come on the show was pulled away because, again, I believe it's personal reasons. I think he did because he personally does not like me. And if he doesn't, that's on him. Hunter mentioned it earlier. Maybe I'm not the best guy to get along with. I think we get along pretty well. I got. I think I've gotten along with a lot of people that I've had on the show. But, excuse me, but for some reason, when it comes to Sentinel, apparently I'm the jackass. I don't get it. Uh, to be honest with you, Travis, I think he's against you, and I don't, I don't know why he'd be against you because it's better for business if you promote the SCW brand, right? And I'm a lovable guy; people love me. Yeah, and even if they don't think you, Travis, it's better for business. Like the Sentinel doesn't have to talk to you, but it doesn't have to stop Dallas from coming on the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You know, and I, it, it just, it, again, it's unfortunate with this whole pandemic thing because we're missing out on SCW. I'm missing out on uh, JFW podcasts and stuff like that. I got somebody calling in. Um, oh, let's find out who this is. This seems new to me. Hello. Yellow. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, I don't want to sound rude, but do I know you? Um, I think you met me a few times. Uh, you're the cu- you're you're Matt's cousin, right? Who's Matt Novak. Matt? I have no idea who that is. I'm Mike Nolan's cousin. Oh, okay, maybe uh, maybe maybe it's the guy that's usually with you at the wrestling matches. Um, I'm an, I'm new to the SCW. Uh, I've been training with Brody a lot, so I was just calling in and saying hey and. Uh, oh, okay, okay. No, yeah. now I remember. Uh, no, I I never had a chance to meet you personally. Um, I I do remember them talking about uh, a new uh, 
a new student coming in. But no, I never had a chance to meet you, man. But hey, thanks for calling in and uh, listening to the show. Oh, no problem. It's awesome. So you, so you know Brody? You, you rest, you, you're training with Yeah, Brody? Me, and Bro- me and Brody train a lot together. Nice. nice. Well, 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 tell me a little bit about yourself, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm always a big fan of meeting new people. Uh, what got you? Uh, what got you into the business? Oh, now Bobby, um, oh. to call in. Hold on one second, Jimmy. <laughs> Bobby, huh. it's too late. I already got some other people on, but tell you what, I'll talk with them. Give me about three to four minutes with them, and then Bobby, I will finish up the show with you. You'll be my last guest for the day. But let me finish up with these guys first. So, how did you get into SCW? How did you uh, become a fan of the business? Um, well, I've always been a big wrestling fan, uh, period. Um, I work at Paysetter. Um, Paysetter is okay. one of the, uh, sponsors of SCW. Um, yeah. just happens, uh, you know, John was telling me about the wrestling and I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to go and uh, check it out. So, mm-hmm. um, I believe it was like February. I went to the February show, checked it out. Um, I was like, oh, this is really cool. It's something I'd want to get into. Um, so, uh, I talked to, uh, Bane X about it, um, showed up and just loved it ever since. It, it's, it's a great experience. I always been a big sports guy. Um, uh, I'm local in the area. Uh, I played semi-pro football for 10 years. So I'm all about the competition and I'm all ready for the sport. Um, yeah, it's true. definitely fun and it's a, it's a wild ride. Awesome. Awesome. It, it seems like Bane X is really drawn in like the next, like, group of talent you know between you vj price uh Neeser. i mean it, it's really cool i mean it, it's it's awesome that you have this one guy who cares about the business so much that he's ready to pull in the next generation and that's really cool um how has how has the wrestling school been for you you know how how are the uh, how are the trainers how is everything going for you is it what you expected is it a little bit more than what you uh you know you thought it was? Uh, I mean, definitely. Um, when I came in, they were they were open arms. They were happy mm-hmm. to greet me, and, and that's what I love about that. It's completely awesome. Um, they acted like I've been there for you know years. Um, definitely, the training as- aspect of it is completely different from football. Like I tell you, I the the first couple of weeks, I was I was sore getting out of bed in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it just kept me wanting to come back. Um, the people, the, the, they're great. You know, James Creed, uh, JPH, uh, Brody, um, they've helped me a lot through uh, me just starting, uh, showing me techniques, ways to do it. Um, I am a bigger guy. Uh, you know, I'm about 6'2", about 4'25". Um, okay. So, um, but them showing me a lot. JPS showed me a lot. Uh, James Creed has shown me a lot. But uh, working with Brody's been awesome. I just I can't wait to get in the ring and uh, show everybody what I can do. Thanks, man. Well, hey, I I appreciate you calling in and kind of telling me that. I mean, I, I've I've been there for years and I've never felt welcomed. But I mean, hey, at least they're doing that for you. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? it, it's weird. You know, it's like you sit there, and you think you're doing the best for them and everything, but they still look at you like, "Why the hell are you here?" But I get it. Um, <laughs> So okay, uh, I'm not gonna. I don't want to cut you guys off, but uh, we're getting towards the end of the show, and I gotta get Bobby Blues on here so I don't look like a liar. Um, but I do appreciate you guys calling in. And uh, quick question for you guys: Are you, are you guys a fan of this? Is this something I should keep, uh, keep doing in the future? Yeah, oh yeah, right, absolutely. Definitely. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the uh, feedback on that. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the show. I'm gonna talk to Bobby Blues here, and um, I saw James Creed was calling in. Ah, Let's see if I feel like calling him back. But uh, thanks, guys. I do appreciate it. Thank oh, you. not a problem. Thank you for having us. Okay. Bobby, this is your opportunity. If you call me back right now, I'll give you the last three minutes of this episode. There we go. <coughs> Bobby, are you there? Am I coming in loud and clear or not? You are coming in loud and clear. I'm so okay, nice. I'm so I'm so glad you found the headphones. I'm so glad we're back into this. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I bumped James Creed for you, man. I'm making you the last god uh, last guest of this show. Well, James Creed gets enough time as it is. I think this is my first time on the show. Uh, it is. I think he's had enough uh, time in the spotlight that James Creed has, and um, now we can go 
work on some promos and <clears throat> whatever else he's got going on. But he's certainly one of the hardest workers. I've seen him uh, firsthand at the school. He's always one of the first ones there, last ones to leave. And mm -hmm. uh, I've seen him work through injuries, and he does what he can, and uh, he's one to watch in the future. Oh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I mean, I, I watched the uh, video of when he uh, had the knee injury at that one show, and I'm not going to lie, I – it made me nauseous, you know, to think that that happened. But he fought back from it really quick, and I was really impressed with it. Um, but, I mean, I, I want I want to be a man of my word. I want to be honest. And, you know, when he called in, I was like, oh, maybe I should take the, I should take the call, but I'm not. <clears throat> Bobby Blues. I haven't had a chance to talk to Bobby Blues because every time I was at the SCW school and I was doing the interviews with everyone, you were kind of out there in the business. So, yeah. Uh, so it's nice. it's nice that we get to sit down and talk. Uh, the first thing I do want to kind of uh, discuss and everything is uh, House of Blues. Like, I, how how do you decide on your fan, uh, on your guests and everything, and how how do you make it a show within a show? Um, well, let's set the record straight first and foremost here to Steve Doris. I guess he's listening in. The only time Bobby will ever close a show. Don't know what he means by that, but this is my first time on the show. I've been invited. Invite me on the show. I'll come on anytime, my brothers and sisters. Uh, but the House of Blues, how do we put it together? It's uh, I always liked that. I was my favorite scene in pro wrestling was always Piper's Pit. I like Piper's Pit better than the Snake Pit. I liked it better than Brother Love Show. Uh, there were some good ones out there, but Piper's Pit was the best. And um, I try to mimic that the best I can. But the way we come up with the guests is who's hot. Who's hot right now? And who's on their way up and who's not slowing down anytime soon because we want the exciting guests on the show. And we need somebody who can actually hold the conversation as well. You know, some of these guys are great wrestlers, but they're not as great behind the microphone. And I don't want to carry them through a House of Blues segment. So for them to come on the House of Blues, they got to know how to talk behind the microphone. So uh, we all will take that into account when uh, choosing a guest for the show. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, one of my first uh, earlier recollections of – going to SCW and seeing Bobby Blues uh, was, it was an unfortunate situation, but it was the hair versus hair match. Yeah. Um, that uh, it seemed like, you know, you, you had uh it was what now the Lee Payne versus the family. Right. And it was yeah. your hair versus uh, Charlie's hair. Yeah. That you won, but they restarted the match and you ended up uh, having to get your head shaved. Uh, what was going through your mindset during that time, knowing that uh, you're gonna you're gonna get shaved bald due to a um, uh, a uh, a restart of the match? Well, I didn't plan on that happening, and I knew I should have cut out of there as soon as I possibly could. Apparently, I didn't leave fast enough. But that's the best time Ivan Manson ever had. Did you see the big cheesy grinny smile that Ivan Manson had on his face the whole entire time he was cutting my hair? I've never seen him smile before ever, but he was certainly have a good, having a good time there, so I'm glad uh, he could have a good time doing that. Uh, what was going through my mind, I guess I was trying to get out of there, but uh, I even had a pretty good handle on me, and uh, yeah. But I'm uh, letting it grow out a little bit now, so I'm, uh, you know, I kept it for a few years and uh, letting mm -hmm. it grow out some, so I think that's run its course. Yeah, I got Bobby you. Blues, I just think Bobby Blues looks better with hair, and I think the fans think so too. Well, then, and that's the thing too. Like you know, when you mention hair, I mean, like, you're always wearing the hats and everything, man. Like realistically, yeah. I don't think people really noticed after your head got shaved. Well, right, yeah, I was trying to cover it up some, and uh, even now mm -hmm. more so. Uh, sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't, depending on what was going down. You know, I took it off if I had a match or something like that. Whatever, I thought I looked good because I had a nice round bald head. Everybody told me how nice of a bald head I had. I had like the perfect head for going bald, and everybody told me that too. So I was fine not wearing a hat. Uh, yeah, yeah. But now I'm growing it out some, and I'm just growing a hat to keep things covered up and keep it under wraps for now. And when I'm ready to break it out again, I'll break it out. Nice, nice. Uh, we we kind of discussed uh, earlier uh, with Hunter Payne about you know his new manager uh, C. Red, and it kind of it kind of brought up the history of uh, you managing Elite Payne um, back in uh, 2017 2018 era. Uh, before you kind of branched off on your own to start building your own career, both in the ring and uh, the House of Blues. Uh, what do you think um, C. Red would bring to Elite Payne that maybe uh, you didn't? Or what do you think you brought to Elite Payne that you th don't think C. Red would be able to? Uh, I think C. Red will bring energy. He'll, uh, <laughs> he'll bring the pop. You know, and a good manager knows how to elevate the audience to get behind his team. And that's yeah. what C-Red is one of the best at. I was quite shocked when he came out uh, at the last show. And uh, yeah, I didn't know he was – nobody knew anything. 
I didn't know he was coming back. And then he came out of those. So that was a nice little shocker. And I think he fits right in. So what he's going to bring is uh, some attention, some pop. He's certainly not going to be quiet. You know, uh, yeah. I would say he keeps things energized. And he'll just bring the fans and keep them engaged. And, uh, you know, I guess I kind of did my thing. I ran my course, but I just couldn't keep up with the travel schedule they had. You know, I mean, I couldn't make it to every single show after a while, and it wasn't fair to be their manager when I couldn't make it to every single show because they have a more hectic travel schedule than I do. Our travel schedules uh, don't match up all the time, I should say, yeah. uh, because mine can be quite hectic as well. And if I couldn't be there every single time, then I'd rather just step aside and do something different. And I think C Red's going to bring dependability to the team. He's going to bring some. Uh, he's like the, he's going to make it one big foundation, and he's going to be so consistent with the way he manages them that uh, you're going to find consistency with Elite Pain in the coming weeks and months. I got you. I got you. I, I got but I hope he gets a different and... color suit. I think he could use a different. <laughs> he calls it C Red. I know. I get the red thing, but I think mm-hmm. he needs uh, at least one or two different uh, uh, outfits to wear to the ring. Not I just red all the time. <laughs> all right, I got two more questions for you, and then we're gonna we're gonna call it today. So, uh, the first question I have is: uh, earlier we had Neister on the show, uh, December twenty twenty four. Neister's making his debut, teaming up with uh, Paloma um, and tag team. I thought it'd be cool to see on the other side of the ring Sierra and Adam Cage. Uh, Hunter went with Maverick Cage and Kamikaze. Bain X went with you and uh, Gino Latino. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you fantasy booking this. On one side, you have Paloma Star and Neeser, who is across the ring against them in that tag team match. Now, Vanex made it a point. It doesn't have to be a mixed tag. You could, you could have two guys, two women, a guy and a girl on the other side. What are you fantasy booking? Bobby Blues and Jordan Grace. Okay. There we go. Bobby Blues and Jordan Grace. I, I, like I love me some Jordan Grace, Daddy. <laughs> That's good. All right, final question. Now, we've, uh, we obviously this pandemic has uh, put a big snag in uh, independent wrestling uh, all over the country. Uh, shows aren't happening, and it's unfortunate. Uh, why don't you tell everyone, I know a lot of these are uh, the SCW wrestlers, but we do have a couple fans in here. How do you? Uh, what would you tell them to help them stay involved in uh, the SCW and what's going on? Uh, just keep following the page. You know, I think we're doing a good job of keeping the fans engaged by making posts on the Facebook page and keeping them engaged on Facebook. So stay uh, focused on their Facebook pages, support your whoever your favorites are, follow their pages and keep commenting in the threads so they can keep engaging with you as well. And uh, yeah, just keep doing that. We'll keep you guys updated when the next show is. And we're always going to bring the intensity. You guys know once it starts back up again, you know, we're going to bring the action your way. So it's all coming in. Hopefully not too much longer is it going to last. Awesome. Bobby, I do appreciate you sitting with me, and thank you for being the one to close out the show with me. I do appreciate Thank you. That. All right, stay posted on South Lane Championship Wrestling on Facebook. Engage yourself. Thanks for listening. <laughs> See, look at that. I gave Bobby B- uh, Blues an extra five minutes. That man was on here for eight minutes. I said three. I gave him five. And sorry, James, I do apologize for not getting you the time to come on here. But if we're going to do this again, I'm going to give you the opportunity in the future. Uh, guys, it is a little bit after 2. I promise this is only going to go to 2 o'clock. That means we spend four hours together sitting down, talking with some SCW uh, stars, uh, the commissioner, Seno, and even some fans as well. So it's been really cool to sit and talk with you guys. Again, just to give you the plugs. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at JFW Podcast, Just Freaking Wrestling. Make sure you uh, follow us on all platforms for podcasting, Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and we are on YouTube. So if you guys ever want to check out the video release content of the podcast, they are available on YouTube. Just search Just Freak Wrestling or the JFW Podcast. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here, guys. Uh, you, This was nerve-wracking for me. It's a little, it's a little different than doing pre-recorded. To actually sit here and talk to people live is nerve-wracking for me, but um, I'm willing to do it forward and keep on doing it. If you guys had a great time, uh, I'll make sure to do this in the future. Uh, We'll shoot to do another one here in April. Uh, I don't know when the next show is going to be because no one knows when this pandemic thing is going to come to an end. So if it doesn't, maybe we'll shoot to do another one uh, here uh, at the end of April if there is no SCW show. If we are lucky enough to get an SCW show at the end of April, we'll do it for the following Sunday. But I'll set the event up on Facebook so you guys can find it. And uh, I will you know, make sure that I am uh, doing uh, my best here 
for you guys. Again, check out our merchandise at Tee Public just by searching JFW, T-E-P-U-B-L-I-C.com. Search JFW. Thanks again to BallWash.com and Audible for being a sponsor. If you guys are a big fan of uh, audio books, especially when you're sitting around doing nothing uh, during this pandemic, go to AudibleTrial.com backslash FreakNet. Sign up for a 30-day tr- uh, free trial. On top of that, you get a credit to your first book purchase. Uh, Audible and Ball Wash are great sponsors, and we're lucky to be working with them. And if you guys haven't had a chance, check out Patreon. It's one of the biggest ways to help out the podcast. Uh, Patreon.com backslash JFW Podcast. There's many tiers that are set up to you to sign up for, and every tier offers something more than the one above it. Uh, so many ways to help out the podcast, even just by listening. It helps us out huge. So thanks again, guys. Thank you for listening. That's all I got. So as always, I am Travis Steve. Thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW Podcast.